Hi, I'm David and welcome to LeisureBit. And today we're going to be fitting a Victron Orion non-isolated smart DC to DC converter. They're sometimes called B2Bs and we're going to be fitting that in our Eldis CV20 camper van but the procedure is pretty similar irrespective of what type of van you have. First of all, just to let you know a little bit of background, there's two types of Orion DC to DC. There's the isolated and the non-isolated. I've got the non-isolated here. So the non-isolated works by having a common ground, earth, negative, whatever you want to call it, between the vehicle battery and the leisure battery. And where you've got that common uh, ground in things such as camper vans it makes sense to use the non-isolated version where you haven't got a common ground so it may be in a, a boat or a motorhome or something like that where you've not got a chassis to connect the grounds up or you don't want to connect the grounds up or you want a little bit more isolation then you can get the isolated version the isolated version's a little bit more expensive, between 25 and 50 pounds more. I paid, I think it was just under 200 pounds for this. And my plan is to fit it in parallel with the other battery to battery that came installed with the van to give some additional capacity for charging. However, you could just fit this as a standalone. You can fit them in parallel, so you can fit more of these. One thing to watch is to make sure your alternator has enough capacity for what you want to fit. And of course, make sure you put the correct wiring in so that you don't overload it and cause an issue. So let's have a look in the box. There's the, the box. So within the box, there's a connector and we'll come on to that and what we're going to use that for later but it's basically to instruct the charger when to and when not to charge or you can use it automatic as I say it comes with a little bridge there just to connect the two together and then we've got the DC to DC converter or B to B along with some instructions. I picked this one up when we were at the Harrogate show. The benefit this will give is when we're driving along we'll get more charge into the battery so if we're doing a little bit of a tour off grid it just means we can top the battery up a little bit more. One thing I found with the factory fitted one is that it's not delivering the full 25 amps and I believe that could be to do with the wiring so what we'll probably do also is make some modifications to that just to make sure we get the full power through. So there's the device out of the bag. On the back of the device there's a big heat sink uh, which helps keep it cool. We've got three connections here. We've got a positive uh, from the vehicle battery or the input. We've got the ground or the negative. And then we've got the output, which connects to the leisure battery. So the input goes to the vehicle battery and the output goes to the leisure battery. Gives you a little bit of a, a view of it there and a rough idea on the, on the sizing of it. Reasonable weight as well. And there is a LED on it uh, to show you the status and another one there. You also get the instruction manual here which explains how to connect it up. It does come with a five year warranty as well. So my plan is to connect a new wire from the vehicle battery and I'm gonna run that underneath because I've had a look at routing internally and it looks like it's gonna be a bit of a pain and I don't particularly like running cables under the floor where you're walking on because you tend to get unseen wear and uh, that can lead to trouble as you'll know. 
So I'm going to run it underneath and just make sure it's tucked well out the way. I'm also going to put the cable in some conduit uh, just to give it some extra protection from the elements because I don't want the cable deteriorating over time. And I'm going to put an 80 amp fuse on the cable. Now the cable I've bought is capable of carrying over 100 amps. So that's a good size fuse to protect that cable. And that will be from the vehicle battery. I'm then going to run it under here where I've got all my leisure battery connections. I am going to have to drill a hole in the floor to feed the wire through because there isn't a suitable one available that's big enough because it's a fairly chunky wire we're going to be running there. What I'll do then is I'm going to connect from that terminal post and then put a separate fuse into the B2B and we'll probably put an isolator or a switch in as well. We'll work that one through as we go through, just so that if there's ever a problem, we can disconnect it. And then secondly, uh, we'll then run exactly the same from the output of the B2B into the leisure battery, again through a fuse and an isolator. I've tended to double up on fuses and isolators because Heard a lot of feedback about some of the isolators not always tripping out when, when they should do. So the fuse is an extra bit of armoury essentially to make sure that it's safe. And if anything goes wrong with the isolator, it doesn't then cause us a problem. But we'll run through that as we go through the install. That's the plan. We'll see how we get on. And I'm sure if you watch till the end of the video, we'll have to make some modifications. Now, the first thing I want to do is work out where to route the cable because it's relatively straightforward after that. Then I'll work out where to mount the B2B so that we've got it somewhere sensible. Obviously you want to make sure there's a bit of uh, airflow where it is so don't want to overly jam it up against something so you want to leave a little bit of room around it so the air can flow through. If I do find an issue with it warming up, I'll just put a little computer fan or something on just to draw the air through it to keep it as cool as we possibly can. As I mentioned as well, my plan is to use the this in parallel with the existing battery to battery converter. Now, I'm not gonna get the advantage that you get with, with these where you can network them together and make them really smart, but I don't see that an issue uh, because it should give us, if we use the new cable we fed, we should get pretty much 55 amps uh, charge capability. I am also gonna check the alternator for sizing as well, just to make sure we don't overload it and cause an issue. It's super important that you check that because what you don't want to do is have your alternator having a catastrophic failure. You don't want it catching fire or anything like that because it's been overloaded. So always check your alternator to make sure it has the amount of power available. Now this vehicle's got start stop as well so we will be using the um, D plus uh, basically the engine running signal and uh, charge available signal to actually switch the B2Bs on and off and I'll also be putting an isolating switch in as well again just so that I can cut them off if there's ever a problem and just block that signal from feeding through. We will be doing something super clever later on. We'll cover that in another video. So the switches are temporary and then we're going to do something different in the future. But the main thing for now is getting it installed, getting it connected up and making sure it's nice and safe. Another really important piece, and again from a safety perspective specifically, we're going to put a pretty thick cable from my negative bus bar which is near the leisure battery down to the chassis of the van and the reason I'm doing that is to make sure we've got a really good negative connection but the reason for using a thick cable is we do not want a situation where we have a short circuit to the chassis of the van and at the moment it's connected up but it's not the most robust connection so it's only a small kind of wire it might take you know 30 maybe 50 amps if, if you're lucky but we really want a very good connection to ground worth noting if you are tempted to connect the ground back to the battery uh, important not to connect it directly to the battery if your battery's got a, a power sensor and to connect it to the ground point on the vehicle 
rather than the negative terminal itself. Now you could use the converters connection if you've got one. The problem I have with that, it's got a maximum rating of 50 amps. It's 50 amp fuse and I think the cable's rated at 55 amps if I'm not mistaken. But again, it depends on the type of van you've got. We're not gonna use that because then we've got a clean feed from the battery back into this compartment so that we can connect onwards and then we remove anything that we don't know about because it, it's completely new wiring then back through. Right, enough talk, let's get on with the job. So just before we get started, let's run through what we're gonna do. So first thing we're gonna do is drill a hole in the floor of the van and that's to let the cables through so that we can route them to their battery box and to the relevant earth point on the van. After spending some time procrastinating over where to drill the hole, I eventually landed on, this has been the best spot to drill it, just where we've marked up there with the cap. And the reason for that is, it's very handy to connect into the wiring, because we've got the earth that we're gonna run into here, or the ground that'll connect to the chassis through there and underneath. And also then, we can take the positive feed and then feed it along here. And I'm gonna mount the B to B. I'm just gonna put a piece of wood there. And I measured from here across to there, and it works out around 40 centimeters. So it gave a good positioning pace based on where this feeds through underneath. So that's where the hole's going in there. From there, I can then route the wiring through to the front um, of the van and connect it into the vehicle battery underneath through some protective conduit. Unfortunately, I lost audio on the GoPro at this point, but essentially I drilled a pilot hole and then checked it underneath to make sure it was in the right place after carefully measuring. So we've come through exactly where we wanted to which is just there. So we can just drill that all out bigger now. And the plan is to use the bracket here. You can see that. There's the earthing point. I used a 39 millimeter hole saw to drill through the floor and into the metal. It was burning a little bit as it went through, so I finished the hole off after I'd cut through this with a step drill from underneath and from above. I'm now going to spray some primer spray where we've cut the hole in the van just to seal the metal work up and make sure it doesn't go rusty. It's worth putting something on the inside as well because you don't want to actually spray through the hole and cover everything in primer paint on the inside. I just use some kitchen roll weighted down with screwdrivers for that. It's that done. I'm going to leave that overnight to set and then we'll pick it up again in the morning and finish the job off. So that's the hole put through, ready to do the wiring tomorrow. Just gonna pop this little pot over it just to make sure we don't get any visitors in the night. So the hole's dried nicely overnight. Yeah, quick look at it there. So next step then is just to put something within it so that any cabling going through isn't going to snag on it. Secondly then, because we're rooting to the battery box, we need to remove the vehicle battery and then make a hole in the battery box so that the cable will feed through at the other end. So I'm going to cut the power off now to the battery to battery maintainer just to make sure there's no power going in before we disconnect the battery. So we're now going to open the door and then we're going to remove the carpet here to give us access. The battery in the Fiat Ducato is located under the floor and you can access it by undoing these six plastic screws here. You release the screws by turning them anti-clockwise and then the cover will lift off like that and then you can get into the battery compartment. So you can see the negative terminal there. There's the earth connection on the van. It connects into there. And that's a current sensor 
for the battery uh, which connects back into the Fiat electrics. So whenever you create a connection for the battery you want to take it from the earth point and not from here essentially. So the positive of the battery terminals there and you can see the various fuses for different things and feeds through and we'll be taking a feed off this to feed back to the connection that we're going to run through and we'll actually be removing the battery in order to get access to it. To remove the battery you remove this which releases the clamp and then you can disconnect the terminals and take the battery out. So I've removed the battery clamp with a 13 millimeter spanner. I'm now gonna remove the terminals, starting with the negative with a 10 millimeter spanner. That's the negative removed. Now we're gonna remove the positive. The positive undoes clockwise, the negative anti-clockwise. If you press that in, you can also lift that out just to give a bit more clearance and move that out of the way. And you need to undo that screw and that screw as well, which you're just fastening this down before you can remove the battery. You can then lift this out the way so you can get in to remove the battery. And then the battery just lifts out and there's the battery box. We're gonna make the hole just down here. And we're gonna fit this grommet so we need a 20 millimeter hole and then that'll connect to the conduit and allow us to feed it through. After we've done that, then we need to route the positive cable along under the van. I'm gonna run it along the passenger side because there's an existing cable run there. So it just makes sense to run it in with that. I'm gonna use cable ties just to fasten the cable up with the existing cable run and then feed it through into the vehicle battery box. Um, and then we can connect it up to the vehicle battery then. We need a bit of room underneath now, so let's pop it on the ramps. So we've got the battery tray, which is just under there. You can see where we took the cable out before, just here. You can see the bottom bolts for it. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna run another cable out of the bottom corner of that, similar to where we ran the other one. And then that should give us a feedback. Run it along under the van. Have a look along here and then run it along to the back. And then we'll bring it through the floor where we made the hole. For the positive connection, we'll be using some 16 millimeters squared cable, which will run from the battery back to the hole we've just made to feed through. So we'll be feeding the 16 millimeter positive through this conduit for when we run it underneath for some extra protection. There we go. That should hold it in place while we pull it through. Now that we've pushed it through the hole at the back where we're going to feed it into near the ledger battery. Let's get on and route the wiring to the battery box at the front. We'll be following the existing cable routing. So we're up to the step and I've been using these cable ties to fasten it against the existing wires which are running underneath to hold it all nice and tightly together so it doesn't drop off. We'll now put the battery back in. Make sure you refeed the breather pipe just into the hole down there just for the battery and then we'll pop the clamp back on and put it back together don't forget to screw in the clamp as well which is just there um, two screws back in clamp back on and then tighten up the positive there we go that's it connected back up ready to go and we just then need to connect the new wire we brought through which is this one onto this. So we've run the negative wire now to the chassis uh, that's just bolted on underneath and run that through there. That's going to connect to the negative post on the opposite side to the battery of that so we get the reading of how much power is going through. So I'm going to cut that about here and just fix a terminal on there and then connect it to that. For each of the connections I crimped a terminal and once I'd crimped it, I put some heat shrink over and then used a heat shrink gun just to melt it down to give a nice tidy connection.
One of the challenges I had in fitting it was I found that the original place I'd connected the earth to the spare wheel carrier wasn't a very good earth. So what I'm doing here is just connecting an additional one and joining it up with the bolt I put through on that to improve the earth connection to make sure we get a good current flow back via the negative. We'll tighten the bolt up now and that should make a good connection. And then we're going to connect the power along here and then connect on to where we're installing the B2B. See now we've got the positive input which then runs through this breaker and then goes to the vehicle battery and then we've got the ground which is the black wire there which feeds back to the bus bar and then finally we've got the positive output and that comes along here and then feeds into the control box. To finish it off I added two 40 amp fuses, one on the input and one on the output just to make sure it's safe. Prior to installing I double checked with the manufacturer's literature and that states the different lengths of cable run for the sizing as we're using five meters it's 16 millimeters squared. So to summarize let's just do a quick walkthrough of the um, wiring we've done. We'll work from the vehicle battery backwards so the vehicle battery is connected to the chassis of the vehicle which is the negative and the positive then we've fed via a 60 amp fuse that feeds through some 16 millimeters squared red cable that feeds back through the hole we drilled and along a wiring line underneath the vehicle and that feeds via a fuse and a breaker in this case into the Orion's input and then we've connected the negative of the uh, Orion to the bus bar which connects to the negative and we've also put a connection on then from the negative to the chassis of the vehicle to complete that circuit back for the vehicle battery and also for the leisure battery negative. We've then taken a feed from the leisure battery via a 60 amp fuse which then feeds to the Orion and then into a 40 amp fuse. The reason for a fuse at each end is to protect the cable against any, any damage at either side of it and also to protect against any faults. I may add a breaker or a switch into that just so that I can isolate it at that side as well but for now that's how it's connected up. If you get the Orion isolated version the only difference is you have two separate negatives one that you connect to the vehicle battery or to the vehicle chassis and the other that you connect to the leisure battery. I don't know if it's simpler um, but it, if, if you want to avoid any, any complications of uh, connecting up then you can get the isolated version. It's just slightly more expensive but it's a fairly straightforward positive negative vehicle battery in positive negative leisure battery out but it's the same principle with fusing and things like that. It's always worth not taking a chance because you don't want any issues and if you use breakers it's sometimes worth having a fuse as a backup as well because the behaviour is different in different situations with those. That's it installed. We'll give it a good test over the next few weeks. I'm not anticipating any, any issues but uh, we might make some minor adjustments to the settings but seems to do the job with a brief test I've uh, done. As I say, the, these are plenty of people have fitted these, so I'm not anticipating any issues. If there was a problem with the unit, it's easy enough to swap out as well. So one thing to finish on, I had a very strange side effect happen. So after I've installed this, the start stop on the vehicle where it automatically stops when you're waiting at a junction or at traffic lights, for example, that was running quite intermittently before I installed this. Flawless now. Um, let us know in the comments why you think that might be. I've got my theories, but I've got two theories on it. It was by connecting the negative of the leisure battery to the vehicle chassis, making it at the same voltage as the vehicle battery negative. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.